Ramona, where are we going? Where are we going? Guys. We're going. Dolphins and fishies and dolphins and fishies. And turtles too. Are they going to swim? Big swimming turtles? What about sharks? What are the sharks going to say? <laughs> What's up, Lionel community? It's your boy Chris coming at you live as always from the man cave. Rocking fresh Lunchbox Records. Beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina t shirt. About to enjoy myself a, an awesome Sycamore Brewing, my favorite brewery in Charlotte, North Carolina. Mountain Candy IPA, my favorite beer that they have. So far, at least. Because <laughs> I always count on these guys to keep up in the ante, keep bringing the great brews. I see only, I know only a few of you follow me, uh, even giving a shit about what kind of beer I drink, so uh, make sure to start talking about the records. In this video, in today's video, what I want to talk about with you guys is a couple of v, uh, VCLT packages from a couple of awesome dudes uh, from a boy. Mike Guitar Player 07 um, here on uh, YouTube. If you don't follow him, jump, jump on it, jump on it. You really should. Um, as well as my boy Trailer Park Pimp on Instagram. Uh, gotta love that name. Um, but anyway, to get right into it, not not only that, by the way, but I've uh, but uh, uh, several recent Lunchbox Records uh, scores. So a couple of VCLT packages, a couple of recent. Uh, uh, Decent sized stack of uh, recent Lunchbox record scores. So, from my boy, Mike Guitar Player 07. A couple of these are trades. And uh, one in particular piece is a uh, BCLT. Yo, Chris. Your boy Mike here with another record package. You are already knowledgeable and have heard Dolly Parton's Jolene before, so no need to explain this record. You know the name George Shearing, but I'm not sure if you're even giving him a listen. You're in for a treat. Once I rediscovered this record in my collection, I knew you needed it. Sharing is an Englishman who eventually moved to New York. Unfortunately, we lost this great pianist in 2011, but his cool jazz bebop and songs live on. I think you'll truly enjoy this record. The third record that you did not know was coming was another addition to the Ramona 45 RPM 7-inch record collection. I'm not even sure who the artist is. I just saw Ramona when digging and snagged it for you. I hope you and eventually this little one enjoys I look forward to the package you'll be sending me my way. Yep, that's coming, bro. I look forward to blasting the new tunes coming my way. I'm glad we got the trades in and can't wait for the continued future vinyl love. You are the man, Chris, and I'll hear from you soon. Thank you for your constant support and friendship. All the best to you and the family. Your first New Jersey pal, <laughs> Mike. Damn right, bro. Uh, no doubt about it. You've got a package coming your way very soon, and you're going to be very happy. There's going to be a couple of things in there you didn't even know you were getting. You know how I wag them, bro. All right, so about what that letter contained, got a, you are hearing George Shearing and his quintet, 10 inches on MGM. And as uh, Mike uh, uh, described just a second ago in his letter, he's an English pianist who eventually made his way to New York, some bebop, stuff to that extent. Uh, I always tell you guys all the time, 10 inches are not my favorite format, but I do, I do love my jazz 10 inches. I do, they're, they're, they're very interesting and very neat pieces. So I will enjoy it, Mike, thank you very much. I haven't had a chance to throw it on yet, buddy. I've been extremely busy. I haven't even been in this room that I'm filming this video from in, let's call it four or five days. I haven't had the time, but uh, but yeah. It's going to go on soon. going to get a good clean. It's going on. Next up, uh, Mike had seen in one of my videos where I had mentioned picking up a Dolly Parton record and had mentioned that I, that I had really always wanted uh, Jolene. Uh, and so he messaged me and told me he had a double. So here we are. I traded him one of my <laughs> many Johnny Cash records. Which he's yet to get, but because he was right on top of his and immediately sold it, uh, sold it out. But I had a few more things that I wanted to add to Mike's package, 
so it was a little late, later going out. But uh, he'll be pleased, best believe. But uh, uh, Dolly Parton, as far as I'm concerned, is basically the queen of the South. <laughs> so uh, I love her. And uh, it's got, of course, I Will Always Love You is the tune on here that you guys will immediately recognize. And I prefer Dolly's version to Whitney's for a couple of reasons. Um, for one, Dolly wrote the damn song. And I almost always, in, a, in, in the... Um, in a situation in which there's a cover, I almost always side with the, with the original songwriter, for one. Only a couple circumstances in which I don't. All along with the Watchtower, for example, Dylan wrote it, Hendrix killed it. But, uh, but in this particular case, uh, Dolly's is a tender love song, and Whitney's is a, oh my God, everybody look how good I can sing. And she can, and she could, excuse me, I apologize. Uh, she could, but uh, I prefer Dolly's. I do. Uh, maybe that's just the tender-hearted, uh, good old country love song, uh, <laughs> loving uh, individual for me. I'm very glad to finally, after all these years, have this album. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. You will enjoy the Cash album that you have coming your way in exchange for this one. I promise. I had plenty of Johnny Cash, so parting with one. Didn't seem like that big of a deal for a Dolly Parton record I'd always wanted. So uh, you will enjoy it, Mike. And uh, the Ramona record that he referred to in the letter, for you, those of you who were listening close enough, I have no idea what this is. Is this on Hector Records? Division of Dance Records, Inc. But there's a song on the B-side called Ramona. No effing clue who it's by. It says Waltz. So I'm guessing that's the style of music. I'm curious as hell to see what this sounds like. The A side is a song called Moon River. Okay. Um, this is reproduction of this record is prohibited, so it appears to be a promo style deal, uh, Mike, if you were aware. I don't know if you were. Because I know you just saw Ramona and snagged it, and I appreciate it, buddy, because it's going to fit in nicely with my extensive uh, thanks to you and my boy, uh, John Galdieri. So the state of New Jersey is really, really, really funding my Ramona collection. Shout out to Jersey. Cheers, you guys. Two of my best vinyl community friends. Cheers. So thank you, buddy. I really appreciate it. Next up, uh, not only YouTube VC, but he's on Instagram. He shares records. That's VC in my opinion. He doesn't have to have a channel. He doesn't have to sit here. Uh, he doesn't have to sit here and, and, and blab for 40 minutes like I do to be a member of the VC. The guy loves records. He knows music. And he's a great guy. That's all you need as far as I'm concerned. But uh, he and I exchange pleasantries and whatnot every now and then through DMs. Um, it's awesome. Uh, he's a great guy. And he sent me, I think, one other VC LT package before. Well, not too long ago. This is where he's slick. He's very slick. He has sent me a message saying that he had just scored a bunch of jazz LPs for a dollar a piece. And I'm sure he did. I have no doubt, which is amazing for what I'm getting ready to show you. And he had sent them all to me. He sent me a picture of each. And after I had commented on, oh man, awesome, you're so lucky, and everything like that, then he was like, hey man, is there anything here that you would, that you would ever want? And I had, you know, commented back the ones that I'd be interested in adding to my own collection. And it kind of just fell off after that. And then a couple of days later, he sends me a, a message saying, hey, I've got a VCLT on the way to you now, because he had saved my address from the first time. I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't see that coming. And then when it gets here, it is literally every record that I had told him I'd be interested in adding to my own collection. So he is a sneaky, sneaky bastard for that. <laughs> um, first off, the modern jazz quartet plays One Never Knows, original film score for No Sun and Vehicle in Venice. For No Sun and Venice, what am I talking about? One, No Sun and Venice by John Lewis. And it's a uh, black label, original, uh, on Atlantic. So, splat out. That original black label on Atlantic is the one you want. Modern pressing, of course. 
It's gorgeous. It's an awesome album. Modern Jazz Quartet. Uh, great stuff. Milt Jackson. Uh, Percy Heath bass. Connie Kay on the drums. It's, it's, it's great stuff. And anytime you can get an original black label uh, for Atlantic. For example, I mean, I'd love to have the original uh, Giant Steps on a black label by Coltrane. I would. That's one I really want. But uh, thanks, buddy. You really didn't have to do it. Another one he sent me. Duke Ellington Indigos. Had heard many times before. Didn't actually own. Love Duke Ellington. One of the greatest careers in the history of jazz. No doubt about it. Very few people would argue. What's interesting about this one is it is the only purple 6i Columbia that I own. So it's got this, this is 6i, but it's a purple Columbia label. And it is, oh my God, clean. I'm not exactly sure which pressing this is, guys. But it says at the bottom, made in Canada. I don't know if the purple label is exclusive to Canada. I don't know. I haven't done as much homework on it as I should have by now, but I haven't had the time. Uh, if any of you guys know any more about it than what I have been able to than what I've even had time to attempt to look into so far. Please holler at your boy. Um, but yeah, I'm familiar with the, uh, obviously I'm familiar with the uh, red six eyes. And obviously I'm familiar uh, with the red two eyes and whatnot. But uh, the purple six eye really hit me. So I don't know if that's a, Can if that's a Canadian pressing thing. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I didn't even realize it was a Canadian press until I just looked a little harder at it when I was unveiling it to you guys. But Ellington Indigo's, it's a phenomenal album. I really enjoy it. Uh, it's the orchestra, so the trumpet's got Ray Nance, Cat Anderson, Shorty Baker, Clark Terry, Willie Cook, drums, Sam Woodyard, uh, trombone, John Sanders, Britt Woodman, Quentin Jackson, bass, uh, Jimmy Wood, sax, Johnny Hodges, Harry Carney, Russell Prokop, Jimmy Hamilton, Paul Gonsalves, and Piano Duke Ellington. And uh, my favorite that my boy, uh, Trey Apart Pimp, on Instagram sent me was an original stereo presser of Wynton Kelly's Whisper Not on Jazzland. And it's a, an original stereo got that gorgeous purple jazzland label and this bastard is near mint you can eat off of this no split seams no writing no shoes no shirts no problems it is clean as and i cannot wait to drop it on the so sweet man i love wenton kelly i love wenton kelly so much um, I've always kind of looked at Wynton Kelly and, and, and he and I as having something in common. And I'll get to that eventually. Uh, with, I've got a um, Tales from the Nightclub uh, video prepared. Not prepared, but kind of planned out for uh, Wynton Kelly. And uh, I'll get to it a little bit further as to why I relate to Wynton Kelly. But uh, Wynton Kelly, Whisper Not, Jazzland, thank you. My boy. Trailer Park Pimp on Instagram. You are the man. Cheers, bro. It's always amazing to me how people who've never met me, who've never talked to me face to face, my boy, my guitar player, um, 07, has talked to me over the phone. He and I have had a couple of phone conversations. But we've never met face to face. It's amazing to me how people who've never actually met me can be so kind to me. I love you guys. Um, the next up, spread out over a couple of Lunchbox Records trips in beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina. First up, one that, uh, if you're a blues fan, you got to get it into your life. Get rid of this. Food this is. Mississippi, Fred McDowell. I do not play no rock and roll. Awesome album. Not many people know much about Mississippi Fred McDowell. Um, but what you do need to know is that he's awesome. 
that original capital label for the press. It's awesome stuff. Awesome guitarist. Not one you see around very often. Definitely not. It's an original stereo pressing. I love the album. I love everything about it. Um, Scott at uh, Lunchbox Records, the owner, had uh, posted this as uh, an album that he had available in store a couple, a few weeks back. And I had gotten in there, let's say last week, so it probably been posted for two weeks. And when I first saw the posting, I was like, oh man, I'd love to have that. But uh, no chance at last until I can get in there next time. So I get in there, I do my, you know, usual shtick. I go to the holy shit wall. I go to the new arrivals. I go to the blue, excuse me, to the jazz and then to the blues. As I'm looking through the blues, bam, $25. So I had to, obviously. Have not had a chance to throw it on the platter yet, but it is spot clean, so I'm expecting it to be awesome. I really am. Can't wait. I haven't had a chance to listen to it. I don't think I've had a chance to listen to a single record I'm getting ready to show you guys. I've been, it's been busy, guys. I know very many of you guys can relate, so I know I'm not telling any of you guys something you don't know. So, next up, okay, so I'm a big Charles Mingus fan, have been forever. Um, a lot of the uh, ones that I really want, I have. But one of the ones that I've really wanted an original pressing of is Mingus Ahum. And I uh, have not been able to track down that original pressing for a price I can live with yet. In good enough condition, that is. The prices for some of them have been great, but then you look at the condition, it's like, eh, good plus. It's like, nah, nah, dog. And so I've always passed. But I go through a lunchbox and I find an original Columbia Jazz Masterpieces pressing of Mina Saham. And I've had several of these before. A couple of Miles Davises. Uh, they're good stuff. And this one was only $9. It's still in the shrink. Ask me, do I care about that shrink? Chris, do you care about that shrink? Oh, hold on. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, man, does that feel good. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that record feels five pounds lighter. Oh, yes. And now it looks like an album. But anyway, they're good stuff. And I've had a couple of monks. I've had a couple of miles um, of, of this uh, Columbia Jazz Masterpieces. And uh, they've been good stuff. And so for $9, it's super clean. And it came in the shrink, which means nothing to me because I'm just going to tear that shit off. But you get the point. And um, hey, you know what? It's going to hold me. It's going to hold me until I get my original. And then after I get my original, one of you guys can get it for $10. That's usually my, my hustle anyway. That's usually how I wagon wheel. Uh, next up, I got a couple of Blue Note 80th anniversary presents to show you guys. Which um, I've had... Boy, if I had a dollar for every time somebody dropped a message in my comments... Or in my DMs about why I don't bother reissues or why I don't talk about the reissues on the channel. I believe I'd be fucking rich. I really do. I believe I'd be able to have enough money to afford every original jazz album I ever wanted. And I always try my best to answer them as classy as I can. Uh, I do buy them, guys. I do. They're just not what I want. They're, they're placeholders. They are temporary fillers so that I have the music, but as soon as I have a shot at an original in good condition for a price I can live with, they gone. That's me. I love my original jazz. That's my number one thing with my record collection. Everybody has their thing, guys, is what I'm trying to say. Everybody's got their thing. Everybody's got their zone. If you, uh, you, know, you might meet a, a Beatles obsessive, and I was one myself, and maybe they've got every pressing of every Beatles album ever. Or maybe you're like my boy, Dylan, at Noble Records and you've got every Led Zeppelin bootleg you could ever get your hands on and you've got every different pressing of every Led Zeppelin album you could ever get your hands on because that's your thing. My thing is original jazz pressings. Lay off. Anyway. A couple of Blue Note 80s. Both of them, as you can see, still sealed. Uh, 
haven't had a chance, but I did get a chance to buy one and listen to one uh, introducing Johnny Griffin. And I was sold immediately because it was $20 and it sounded great. Uh, Open Sesame, Freddie Hubbard. Awesome stuff. And Grant's First Stand by Grant Green. I want first pressings of both. It's amazing how similar both album covers actually look, isn't it? But anyway, the Freddie Hubbard, Tina Brooks, McCoy Tyner, Sam Jones, and Clifford Jarvis, Grant Green. Babyface will level the organ. I love Babyface. And Ben Dixon on the drums. And Grant Green did a lot of these more stripped down uh, albums, like oftentimes trios. He did several of them, and those are usually my favorites because you've got a nice, smooth guitar. You got something like an organ, and you know you got the drums because I mean hell, you kind of have to have those almost. So, and then today, well, excuse me, recently, I was able to step into Lunchbox Records and get my hands on the next four, all on Prestige or on a Prestige subsidiary. Um, first up, Misty, Eddie Lockjaw Davis with Shirley Scott. It's on Moodsville, which of course is a prestige subsidiary. It's great stuff. It's gorgeous. Very, very, very affordable. And by very affordable, I mean $5. Gotta love $5 for a jazz record. There you go. Why keep my sleeves on the outside? It's that Moodsville label, the green label. I don't know if it's a true first. I don't think it is actually. But it doesn't matter, not for five dollars. Beautiful stuff. I can very much forward to hearing it. Next up, Buddy Terry, Natural Soul, Natural Woman. Also on Prestige. And this one, of course, has. The Trident label, the blue Trident label. I have several like that. Pretty clean, relatively clean anyway. This one, $6. So another one in which I'm not breaking the bank. Gotta love it because I'm very used to breaking the bank for good jazz. Very used to breaking the bank for good jazz. Next up, the Freddie Roach Soul Book on Prestige. Uh, Great stuff. Freddie Roach, of course, got a couple of big ones on Blue Note that I have that I love. So I couldn't pass. And this is another one with the blue Trident label. But great stuff. Freddie Roach on the organ. Evelyn Buddy Terry on the tenor. Vinnie, Corral, Vinnie Corral on the uh, guitar. And Jackie Mills on the drums. Awesome stuff. Great album. And again, for the price, you don't find very many albums on Prestige for this price. So, uh, dun, 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 dun. why would I not? Obviously. Next up, last but not least from recent, uh, recent, recent, recent lunchbox halls. The Eddie Lockjaw Davis cookbook with Shirley Scott on the organ and Jerome Richardson on the flute. On prestige. And uh, here comes the money on this one. Splat out. Beautiful prestige label. Bergenfield, New Jersey label. Awesome stuff. Beautiful glossy cover. Love it. Super clean. Can't wait to give it a spin. And uh, this one was $5. So we're talking about every record that I just showed you of the last handful of prestige albums or moodsful albums for 10 and under. So it's not like your mind blowing, okay, it's not Coltrane, it's not Sonny Rollins, okay, it's you know, not Hank Mobley, it's not Miles Davis. But it's really good jazz for a very affordable price. Because as I tell you guys all the time, it can be done. A lot of people don't think it can be done. It can be done. I promise you. Last but not least. Okay. This is going to strike a couple of you guys as weird because I haven't talked about I'm not sure if I've ever talked about this artist ever on my channel actually. Maybe I have. Maybe I haven't. 
We'll see. But for years and years and years, and still to this day, I'm a big Jimi Hendrix fan. Uh, still to this day. Got a couple of art pieces on the wall of Jimi Hendrix. Big fan. Love him. I think he is a god amongst almost all musicians. Um, not as into the music as I used to be because A, I've heard it all, and B, because I'm just way as far deep into jazz as I could possibly get. But about two years ago, uh, Analog Productions had announced a UHQR uh, 45 RPM pressing of Axis, Bold as Love. And uh, they had announced the mono and stereo format. And figured it'd be a few months before it came out. But uh, went ahead and put in my pre-order. They offered a mono and a stereo. The mono and more limited qualities than the stereo. But I went ahead and ordered both. Because the way I looked at it is, is, at the time, money was great. Two years ago, money was doing just great in my house. And I, and I still listen to everything relatively equally. So I put in an order for both. I'm like, I tell you what, let me order both, listen to both. If I decide that I only want to keep one, then I'll just sell the other. It doesn't matter. But uh, let's order both. Okay, well, you know, a year goes by. You don't hear nothing about them. Um, and this uh, company's MO is to charge you upon shipping. About a year goes by. No word about a potential ship date, anything. No updates, no, no nothing. Uh, several of you are going to hear what I'm saying now and, and, and have a, a different ex experience. And some of you are going to think that I'm whining about it. I'm just trying to tell you my personal experience. No, nothing. And by the time a year had gone by from the original announcement of the release, times were harder for me. Shit had started to happen. Expenses had started to come up. Problems had started to happen. Funds weren't nearly as readily available, and I just wanted to have some idea when this damn thing was coming out. <sighs> nothing. No word. Another three or four months go by. Still, nothing. No word. No word. Uh, and then you started seeing people pop up on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and whatnot with their copies where they were reviewing them. And I'm like, the hell? And me and my buddies are messaging each other like, have you guys heard anything about getting these? Because people are already on social media talking about them. And none of us have heard anything. And then finally, they try to charge everybody's credit card. And you look at your balance and if you didn't have the money, like I didn't, then it was declined. And I'm like, okay, well, screw it then. You guys have pissed me off enough. I've waited nearly two years for this release. Fine, decline it. I don't care. It's fine. I don't need them that bad. And, uh, you know, my buddies had gotten theirs finally after pff, damn near two years. And um, I had gotten, like, an email or something like that to the extent of, if you still wish to go through with your purchase, yada, 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 yada. And basically, I had voiced my extreme displeasure with how they handled the release and about how they had no idea when they were releasing them. They announced, the, you know, a, a release or releases without any window, without any time frame about how they couldn't give us all a couple of weeks notice to let us know when it was they might charge our credit card so that we could have our finances in order because not everybody just has $200 to just spend all at once. I know I sure as shit don't. So I just vo I just voiced my, as politely as I could, my extreme displeasure with the release. And I heard nothing. So I'm like, okay, well, fine. At least I got it off my chest. And then a couple weeks later, they offered me my original order for the original price, sealed copies for no shipping original price. And I was like, okay. Well, my boy Dylan at Noble Records had been wanting one. And the original deal I had cut him when I first made the order was the one that I don't like, the one I like the least. Shit, buddy, I'll just give it to you or trade it to you or whatever. I had made that original deal with him. I'd be like, I would trade it to you, whatever, for for the original price I paid for it. Instead of gouging it and him having to get it later for a gouged price. Which now they're going for several hundred dollars a piece. But anyway, they had made me, you know, they made me the offer. They're trying to make it right. I'd gotten a nice email saying, hey, we just want to make it right. And so I just, you know, messaged my boy Dylan. 
because uh, I knew how bad he wanted one. And asked him, did he still want one? And he did. And he fronted, you know, the uh, <laughs> this uh, transaction. And uh, I told him, I said, you know, you just tell me which one you want. And uh, he wants the mono version. So I'm sitting here before you now with a UHQR Analog Productions 45 RPM 2LP box set, Jimi Hendrix stereo. And now, here yeah, we're not. Jimi Hendrix mono. Uh, makes for a great picture, right? I'm sure they both sound fantastic. Uh, this one over here on the right-hand side belongs to my boy Dylan at Noble Records. We just have to set up a meetup, my friend. She's yours. And uh, as tempting as it is to pop the plastic and see what it sounds like, I'm sure you want a sealed copy. <laughs> so the stereo one over here is mine. I can't promise you I won't ever sell, and I can't promise you I won't ever trade. Uh, but for the time being, my intention is to keep it, uh, to allow myself one holy shit uh, classic rock uh, analog release. But uh, it's nice to know that in the event that a very rare jazz album, an opportunity pops up, that this one's worth a couple hundred. That's nice to know. So no guarantee it'll be mine forever, but it's mine for now. So I guess, you know what? Hey, Analog Productions, quality record pressings. Um, you came through for me in the end, but damn. Maybe don't announce your record, your releases two years before you put them out. Maybe don't do that. But great stuff. Haven't heard either. Um, stereo's mine. I guess I'll never hear the mono. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Great stuff. Anyway. Um... Had some great stuff lately. Have had time to listen to absolutely nothing lately. Uh, spent the entire day today helping a friend in Charlotte, North Carolina move. Yesterday, went and seen the new Quentin Tarantino once upon a time in Hollywood. It's fan-freaking-tastic, especially if you're a Tarantino fan. I highly recommend it. Um, tomorrow, I mean, I'll be at home with my girls, and I'll be giving them my undivided attention, so probably won't really won't have any time to listen tomorrow either, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it we'll see how it plays out. But uh, thank you very much, my guitar player 07. Thank you. Thank you very much, my boy, Charlie Park Pimp on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you to my favorite record store in the Carolinas or in the world. Uh, beautiful Lunchbox Records, Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sycamore, for this tasty brew that I'm sipping on right now. Thank you to each and every single one of you guys who sat through my 33, probably 34 minute video. As always, I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Uh, to all my new subscribers recently, thank you. I appreciate it. And until the next time, until the next video, keep dropping that needle, you guys. <laughs>